Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. If you've got one of these, it's an Atari ST, you'll have difficulty plugging it into one of these, which is a standard VGA monitor. Albeit this monitor, which I've just now developed a line across the screen because I humped it across the room rather heavily. Your only solution is this kind of adapter. And this is a typical sort of adapter that you'll be able to buy online. It's a, oh, I can't remember how many pins that is. 13, 5, 5, 5, 5, 8, 9, 13, 13 pin DIN, which is in the back of the Atari. Have a look, look how many pins. It's a really awkward configuration actually. Uh, to a standard HD15 VGA connector. And don't get confused with your CGA connector, which has less pins. That's normal VGA one that you've got in your, probably in your monitor right now. This is all very well and good for displaying high res Atari mode, and that's fantastic. However, monitors are not capable of the 15 kilohertz frequency of the low and medium resolutions that the Atari ST has, which means you won't be able to play your color games. You'll only get the monochrome. And uh, having seen the output from this on a standard LCD monitor, it's not as good actually as I remember it to be on the Atari ST standard uh, mono monitor. So that was a bit of a shame. However, I'm gonna show you anyway how to proceed to make an adapter for this. If you happened to have one of these magic monitors which is capable of displaying 15 hertz RGB signal, which mine isn't, you can make this. And bear in mind, this isn't a finished item. That's why it's looking a bit uh, experimental because you can see I've used sort of test probe type solder leads and a dirty switch and uh, I've not really cased it. And I'm probably never going to because I've had enough of it. But let me describe to you what I've done here and how you can make your own adapters for each scenario. So this is my little drawing and I'm gonna scroll it up the screen. So don't worry, you'll be able to pause it at the appropriate times, but we're gonna start at the top here. So this is the standard DIN to VGA configuration, and you can see these various pin numbers here. Further down, I've actually written what they are. I had a bit more space, but I'll read, read out what they are at the moment. So 11 is the mono out, and this is going into the R, G, and B of the VGA plug. So you've got the R, G, and B, which is pins 1, 2, and 3 on the solder side, so probably 1, 2, and 3, these ones. And if you want to, you can put an optional 47 ohm resistor in here to sort of attenuate these. Actually, don't put it on the, the high only. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. I'll get to the resistor a bit later. Um, 13 and 4. 13 is ground, and this is going to the sort of RGB ground on the VGA. And then you're also connecting it to 4 in the DIN side because 4 is a high-res detect mode that the Atari will see and then out start outputting things in high-res mode. So that's how the Atari knows that the you know Atari high-res monitor is plugged in. 9 and 12 are easy. This is the horizontal sync goes straight through to pin 13 and vertical sync goes straight through to pin 14. And that's pretty much what you get in this adapter. There's not much there. Um, as I said, you, if you want to, you can sort of put these resistors in to sort of attenuate the signal either here or here, really. Uh, to be honest, don't bother. Just see what you get first. That will really just affect the intensity and the colors and things like that. But just be glad if you can get a picture because of the horizontal vertical sinks are going to be your problem. So don't worry about those resistors right now. Just try it like that. You want to build this? Follow that. Easy job done. Now, if you want to go to the next level, which is the actual RG at B, the red, green, and blue, you just have to wire it slightly differently. So what you do is you take your pins 7, 6, and 10 on your DIN, so that's the RGB out of this um, the Atari, and go straight through into the PC ones, you know, using the optional resistor if you want to, but don't bother. And that will go straight through to the RGB, red, green, and blue. Uh, pin 10, that is the, sorry, that's the blue. Pin 13, as you had before, is the ground. That goes to all of the grounds, the RGB grounds, just as above. But you'll notice you're not hooking it up to four because you don't want the Atari to see, uh, to think that it's in high res mode. So it'll just output in low or medium resolution. And then nine to 13 and 12 to 14 as before. And that's nice and simple too. So you could make that and without this bit in the middle, just go straight through. Jobs are good. Now that'll only work if you've got a monitor that's capable of the fancy pants um, 15 kilohertz 
signal the turret puts out and that'll be like one of those multi-sync monitors and to be honest there is a handful of modern monitors that'll do that none um, of them are ones that I own unfortunately so that's a bit pants however you know I'll uh, have another video on how I kind of got around that in the, in the sort of next video so if you're going to make this switchable because you want to be able to switch high res and low res modes using this very snazzy toggle switch you'll need a four-way switch. So this switch switches between this side and this side. So the center's common, and you've got four of them. And that's kind of what I've tried to draw here. So you can see here, one, two, three, four. And then when you're switching the toggle, it's pulling down all these to this bottom state. It's just going click, 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 yeah, all at the same time. <laughs> and it's quite simple, really. Just put the R. Oh, R, G, and B straight through to these sort of normally closed, say, position here. Co the common goes to the R, G, B on the PC side, so that's good, no problem there. Uh, mono out, so this is the extra one, that's why you need four. Um... <laughs> hang on, hang on, a cotton pick a minute, what have I done here? No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've even confused myself. Uh, you need four for the mono text. Yeah, so the mono out, you connect now to the normally open side, and what you do is you jumper it between the other normally open contacts so that when this is switched down, the mono goes straight to the R, G, and B simultaneously, exactly how we have it up here, one plus two plus three. So that's what you'll get when you switch that there. So, yeah, I was confused by my own drawing, so uh, yeah brilliant hopefully you won't be now the bit that's the sort of clever bit what you want to do is you want to take your ground which is pin 13 and put it on the common side which goes to the RGB grounds on the VGA side that's all well and good so then when you switch it down it will actually pull the mono detect low which is how the mono detect is detected and then the Atari will know that you're in mono mode and then start putting out the mono signal which it will put to R1 plus 2 plus 3, R plus G plus um, B. That's great. Horizontal sync, vertical sync, straight through. And that's it. Jobs are good and really. So uh, I'm going to uh, go and play some more with the Atari ST in high res mode, because that's the only mode my monitor will do. Um, however, this does work. This definitely switches those signals as expected, and your Atari will react appropriately. I don't know whether or not you need to shut down your Atari, by the way, when you're switching this. It seems to reset it, but I don't know if that's a kind of a nice reset or if it's just going, ah, you're killing me, man, and then resetting itself. Hopefully that's been of some use to you. If you've got any comments on this or any questions, please let me know. I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna pan this now up, look. There you go. So hopefully you can pause that <laughs> wherever you need that. Just go ahead and make that. If you need a, a more sort of detailed circuit diagram of these pins and things, you can go get them. Uh, just to show you, I've included this. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Again, if you need to, pause it. This is the solder side of each side, right? So look here, you've got your pin 13 up here. 1, 5, and 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then pins 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11, and to 15. Solder side, remember. Go make it. Enjoy your Atari ST. Please leave comments down below. Click like and subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thanks for watching. I don't know if you've seen it. If you're an Atari ST fan, I have created a playlist for my Atari ST mods as I'm going to start fiddling more with my Atari ST. Please check that out. And again, keep an eye on that playlist because I'll be adding videos to it every now and then.